variables like that, for instance, variables, could we just make like self.studentInfo and just make a instantiated accessible version of that whole object and then we could bracket notation throughout the methods if we wanted to, to access particular? So instead of doing something like this that extracts all the elements or all the, the values from the object, just create like just a student info object. Yeah, but I don't yeah. know when that yeah, would yeah. be beneficial. Okay. Yeah, you can do self dot student info, which is an object mm -hmm. and assign it to student info. But then you kind of have to go back and like, all right, now I have to access student info. You have to like prepend self dot student info and access all the keywords anytime. Okay, yeah, so it's more beneficial to separate it. Right yeah, there. I'd say it's, yeah. it would be less code. Sorry, I wasn't recording until just now. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so again, instead of passing in multiple arguments and not having to worry about the location of those values at those, when you're passing in those uh, arguments, you can create just an object, assign what values you want to those specific keywords that are required in the, in the class and pass in that object, just a single object with all those values. And then ex extract those individual values from that object and assign them to instance variables. So what questions do you have about instantiating objects with objects or hashes or dictionaries? Can you scroll one more time, Tom? Yep. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> All right, let's keep going. So <clears throat> what if you had, I'm gonna comment this all out. What if you had a method like that, that you didn't know how many arguments that to pass in? Like say your method can pass in, can essentially take, you know, as many arguments as you want. So if I wanted to create a method called like, I don't know, um, let's see what we can do <clears throat> that can taste in, take in any, uh, any number of arguments. So, Uh, test arg instead of saying like argument or like param one param two this method didn't know how many arguments to take in like it, 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 in theory it can take in as many arguments as it wants and instead of doing like doing this a million times because this can theor theoretically take an, an infinite number of arguments. There's a short way we can tell this method, hey, this method can take in a number of arguments that we don't know yet. We don't know like the quantity of that. And that is denoted by the star keyword followed by like some, you can do args, that's common, or you can say like, um, uh, yeah, let's just start with args. <clears throat> so, so now this args can be a number of arguments. So I can like say like return or like print args. Let's just run run that, and let's execute this method test arg and pass in a number of different uh, variables or arguments. So I'm like literally just passing in a 
a bunch of different arguments. And now I'm going to print that or execute that. <clears throat> so this args turns all your arguments that you're passing in into what is called a tuple. And now it, it looks like an acts like an array, but there are some limitations to it, but you can essentially uh, loop through all the items and do something to them. So if I run that, do that again, I can print all the arguments down here that I passed in. Now, typically you won't have a million different types of arguments like this, but know that this is like a shorthand to say, hey, this method can take in, in theory, an infinite number of arguments, but we just don't know. So instead of putting spaces or defining uh, specific spaces for all the, all the arguments, this can actually take in an infinite number of arguments and we can access them that by doing like looping through all the arguments, which is actually a tuple. So what questions do you have about a method that can take in a number of arguments like so? Oh, when would you use this or are you gonna go over that next? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we'll go over it, not necessarily arguments, but we'll go over a different one, a different type of these. But so, so Tom, yep. Tom if, uh, for example, if you wanted to, to look at a set of data, could you do, you would do your loop for item in args, um, and then it, you would say like, if the item is a dictionary or something, then yep. do certain things to it. Yeah, you can do you can do that depending on what you want to get out of that method. That's but nice. I do, majority like most of the time you're not really going to be getting inputting different data types and everything yeah. within them. It'll all probably be like numbers or something. Got it. That's but, pretty, but for like your for your student example, you could say if the if the entry if the argument is only uh uh, like numerical or something, you could say, okay, we'll assume that's the student ID and we'll do something to it. Yep. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You can definitely do that. So again, like so, but now say you want your method to take in a, a minimum of one argument and then potentially a infinite number of arguments. So like right here we have args that can take in an infinite number, but what if we want to say like, Hey, we want the first argument, to be like a first name. And if we do that, everything still works. However, it's not printing the first name, but we can do like print first name, clear. Oh, oh again, so, <clears throat> so I can say like Tom There you go. And this, and this args that, um, it doesn't have to, like, it's not a keyword. You can say like uh, numbers or like call it numbers because we know that this is gonna be numbers. Clear that. So it doesn't have to be explicitly called args. However, if you want your method to take in a guarantee that it'll take in at least one, argument and then maybe an infinite number of arguments the the args the star followed by the arguments has to come after whatever uh, parameters you require in your method so you can't do I don't think you can do this see it right here <clears throat> See, missing one required keyword only argument, first name. So these have to be switched like so. What questions do you have about this? 
So we have args. But now, since, uh, how do we do type? Just uh, wrap it in parentheses, the variable, and then type before the parentheses. Yeah, type numbers. So again, the numbers, this args, that's a tuple. <clears throat> There's another way we can input an infinite number of arguments by, it's very similar. Instead of args, they're called keyword arguments. So we can say test. And instead of a single asterisk, it's a double asterisk. And for this one, this takes in what looks like a dictionary, pretty much seems like a dictionary. So I can say uh, for item in quargs, let's see if this works, print item. And what this is actually doing is say, look, it looks something like this. So like first name equals Tom, you know, last name equals pre ID equals, you know, one, two, three, et cetera. So it literally just defines a keyword followed by the value of it. So if I clear that, Keyword can't be an expression. Oh, <clears throat> so here, it can't be an expression like so. I believe that's what the error is. Right there. So that's what this quargs is essentially doing. It's like, hey, first name equals Tom, last name equals pre, ID equals whatever. Does anybody have any questions about keyword arguments? So here's the keyword and there's the, the value of that. I can... And again, each item comes in, it looks like a tuple. Values. Yep. And again, if you want your um, val your method to take in a minimum of like a first name, the the keyword arguments has to come after it. And if you wanted to use a combination of tuples and keyword or argument multiple arguments, tuple arguments and keyword arguments. It has to go in this order, like so. <clears throat> so let's look at an example of this. So we have an employee But instead of using multiple arguments pat being passed in, we want to just use keyword arguments like employee info. Let's just comment that out initially. And let's have a say hello method. Def say hello, takes in self. And returns, hello, my name is first name and last name. So if this is accessing the keyword arguments, 
and I wanted to create a, an employee. Whoop. Name Tom. This keyword arguments. Oh, it's like first name, last name, ID. You can also you can also pass in an object. So if I pass in an whoop. the hell. Like if I created an object and I passed in uh, like a new employee. equals employee dot and passed in Tom. I just want to go like for item in employee info, print the item. I just want to see what that looks like. So again, I initialized, I have a new employee class that takes in employee info as a keyword argument. So it kind of, it looks exactly like this is how I could be passing it in. I can do like something like that. And now I can print a uh, new employee dot say hello. And ex oops, execute that. Uh oh. What's going on? First name. Okay, so right here. <clears throat> no attribute name, first name. So the question is, how do I assign, um, before I do that, just clear it. Comment that out. So right now I'm just initializing a new employee and I'm passing in keyword argument, first name, Tom, last name, Preet. I can do first name, last name. But now if I wanna do assign first name to like, uh, to an, an instance variable, there's a couple of ways I can do that. First, if I wanted to access print, I can, access all the values attributes on this object. I've got this class, delete attribute. Let's just keep looking at all of them. I also have this set attribute method in here. And I also have this dict method on here. So what if I just printed uh, print self dot dict or dunder dict. And now I'm going to clear everything. So this dictionary self dot dict is empty. But if I wanted to update it, I can do self dot dict dot update and I can pass in all the keyword arguments in in in, in this in whatever I pass in that is this employee info and now if I execute that nothing happens but if I print everything out in the new employee instance look at over here I get first name and last name as attributes. So if I do say hello, I get hello, my name is Tom Preet. Cause I'm updating the dictionary of all the attributes. Essentially it's all like the instance, um, instances, variables and I'm setting the first name as, a, as the keyword and the value of that is Tom. So the self.first name equals Tom, self.last name equals Preet by doing the self.dict update the empty dictionary 
to have this first name and last name on here. Because now if I want to print, print self.dunderdict method, and I comment out the hello again, I get first name and last name in that dunderdict. What questions do you have about keyword arguments and how to utilize them so far? Um, sorry, I always have a lot of questions. Um, no, go ahead. So uh, the way we learned last week, you know, the instantiating the, the uh, variables for the, you know, the class, Yep. Objects like name, employee ID, all that kind of stuff, where you set and hard code like what it's supposed to be equal to. Is that obsolete now or should we be using this way? Or what's what's the use for this, you know, as opposed to like this yeah. is literally just saying like, hey, this is another way you can do things. What we've been doing the past week and a half, you can continue doing that if you're comfortable with it. I understand the keyword arguments and the arguments is kind of a lot to grasp, but we just want to let you know that hey. There's an other ways that we can update um, instance variables or assigning instance variables. So <clears throat> like imagine this, I can pass in a bunch of info. So I can even get rid of this and just pass in this Tom object as keyword arguments. It still works the same. Well, uh, what does it say? The two were given. What just happened? So this right in here, I'm saying like, hey, make this a keyword argument. Um, and now print hello. So imagine all that. I only did essentially in one line versus whatever as many lines as this would have been, which isn't that much of a difference, but I just, we just want to kind of show you, hey, there are multiple ways to do this. And you don't even have to use this. There's other ways we can do it. So instead of doing self.dict update, we can like uh, loop through. So for key in, or so key value in employee info to items, which is a tuple, we can print the key and the value Let's just look, this is another way we can do it. Whoop. Again, because I haven't assigned any values, instance variables. So first name, Tom, last name, Preet. Now I can actually assign, um, there's that Q, there's that, uh, in, that built-in method in this class called set attribute, this, this method. And I can set an attribute by doing set attribute on the current instance by passing in self and then the key and the value. And now if I run that again, I get first name, last name in there as well. And now I can actually say hello. My name is Tom Breed. So this is just another way we can create instances or instance variables by using the keyword argument. But what you've been doing the past week, all last week, is totally fine that it's almost easier to do it that way. Because you can kind of see like, oh, I know exactly, like, if I got rid of all this, I, necess I don't necessarily know what kind of instance variables I'm creating other than I have to ensure that I'm passing in instead of, I have to look at what value I'm passing into the employee instance. Whereas up here, I know exactly what this instance method takes in. First name, last name, ID, major, enrolled. So again, this is all about readability for other developers. So, but again, you can go ahead and explore other ways to do it.
What other questions do you have? I'm trying to figure out. Um, it says my. Uh, it says uh, and it takes one positional argument, but two are given. And all I have is just uh, self, uh, comma, uh, asterisk, asterisk employee info. Probably because right here, when you're passing it in. Oh yep, that's you it. Have to, yeah. You have to cur like convert it to a keyword argument. Yeah. People rarely use the, these in Code Platoon. All right. <clears throat> what other questions do you have? All right. 